morning, how you doing? Um, just out doing another wreck here, another new site for me. But I did realise this morning that it's probably over a year ago now, well over a year since I bought this uh, 200 to 600 mil lens. And I know I promised at the time, I did a little short review of it after I'd had it sort of a month, two months. But I did promise that I'd do a full review of what I thought of the lens and whether I could recommend it to you as a, as a lens that you'd want to buy. So that's what I'm going to do this morning. Really quickly, just go through what I've found over the last year, year and a half using this lens and you know maybe why you should choose to buy or not to buy it. Anyway, let's crack on with it. So where do we start with this lens if I think that maybe it's something that you you know would want to buy um, as your wildlife lens for your camera well if we look at the design of the thing first well it's quite a, a lightweight lens so if you take the lens hood and reverse it so if you're going to store it it only comes in at about 318 millimeters from front to back so it's not a massively long lens it's also not a massively heavy lens either I think it's about 2.2 kilograms for the for the lens itself which again is not overly heavy if you look at some of the other lenses in this 600 mil lens um, range sort of zoom lenses from other manufacturers they can be considerably heavier than this so what that gives you is a nice lightweight lens and if you're going to be hauling a lens around all day doing wildlife photography that's one of the things that you do need is to be able to carry it for the whole day um, but what I would say is that although it's lightweight, it doesn't, it doesn't impinge on the quality of the lens at all. And what I mean by that, the build quality is absolutely fantastic. Um, over the year and a half I've had it, I've never had any problems with it. It's really solidly built. It feels like a quality um, piece of kit. Um, I think that is actually enhanced a little bit by the fact that it's an internal zoom. So you've got no, um, I think when you've got a, a a lens that where the the zoom is actually external and the, the lens extends if you like as you zoom further out it can be feel a bit rickety and a bit um, suspect as, re, as regards this because it's all internal it just stays exactly the same you've got a detachable tripod foot so you don't need any tools to remove this basically there's a switch there that you turn and then there's a little switch underneath that you press and it comes straight off so you can remove that, no tools required if you want to remove it. You've also got your zoom function is at the front of the lens now. I know some people prefer to have it at the back. I've, I have to say I normally prefer to have it at the back, but using this lens I've just got used to it, so it's not a problem anymore. And then your manual focus ring is at the back. Again, what I'd say about these rings, the manual focus you can literally move it with one finger so it's very very easy to change your focus manually um, you're not having to try and haul it around and again that goes for the zoom ring you know I've had lenses before where you're literally having to try and crank this around to change the zoom this not only is very very smooth but it's very very short distance that is from 200 to 600 it's like half a turn of this ring and I can do it literally with one finger so again very very smooth it's just buttery smooth actually it really is design wise be a beautiful lens one that you know just oozes quality in my opinion now there's a couple of things that I like the internal zoom for on this um, this lens one of them is it because it's all in, in done internally you're not actually in danger of sucking any dust through the lens so it's all internal, you're not going to pull dust in like you can sometimes if you're moving the lens forward and back on the external. There's a tendency that it can drag dust into inside your lens, so you're not going to have as much issue with that. But more than that for me, it's a case of balance. So you get really used to the balance of the lens and where you need to hold it to keep the lens balanced and where you're comfortable. If you are constantly changing the zoom and the front of the lens is moving out with all that glass on the front, the balance is constantly changing. So it's quite difficult to get that familiarity with where the lens is really well balanced for you. So if you're hand holding all day, which you can do with this lens, 
if you've got a lens where the zoom's external and it's moving the weight forward and back, it is really difficult to get balanced and it can, you know, affect your shots because you're not comfortable. Whereas this, as soon as I pick it up, I know where my hand needs to be. So a really useful feature and uh, yeah, it's one that I really like on this lens. You've also got these little attachment hooks on the side and again, I use these for if I'm using a camera strap, which I don't tend to use very often, but obviously you can't hang um, when you've got a heavy big telephoto lens, you don't want to be hanging your um, lens from your camera because that's putting a lot of weight on this mount. So with having these two rings here, you can basically use those to attach your camera strap and it's not a problem. You've also got some lens buttons here. Now these, again, are, I find them really useful. Some people don't use them at all. Um, one thing you will find with the lens is that it's not got a manual focus override. So if you're in autofocus and you turn the manual ring, it's not going to change focus. It's, focus, it's going to stay in autofocus. However, what you can do, obviously, these are very, very customizable. So you can use any e-buttons on your camera to change from autofocus to manual focus. But what I do, and as I say, this doesn't suit everybody, is I have the buttons on the lens um, they're my manual to autofocus so I can quickly switch between I just find that really useful because say I'm taking a picture of a small bird in undergrowth I might I might autofocus on it and I might get really close but then there's stuff in front of it and there's stuff behind it and the lens is struggling to get in amongst all that I can just hit these buttons here under my thumb and immediately although I'm close I'm not in focus I'm focusing on a branch at the front or the behind I'm all of a sudden I can just literally move that with a finger I'm in manual focus and I can just move that and with focus peaking I can immediately see that I've got the bird in focus and I can take my shots and it's done sort of instantly once you get used to it I know some people do say that they're always catching these buttons but you know, if I catch it and it's not focusing, I know straight away and I can just tap the button and put it back into autofocus. So, but that's personal to me. Again, it's personal preference. The other design feature, obviously you've got, you've got your buttons on the side of the lens. Um, you've got an autofocus to manual focus button. Again, these aren't ideal to hit in a, if you wanted to switch from autofocus to manual focus on the fly, so if you're doing one thing and suddenly decide you want the other, when you're doing wildlife photography, you really need it instantly. That's a couple of seconds probably to hit that and switch it. So as I said, I would recommend changing a button literally near where your um, shutter button is to something like autofocus to manual focus, or as I say, like I do, one of these buttons on the lens. But you've got a switch there from autofocus to manual focus. You've then got a focus limiter. Now that's useful if you're, you know you're going to be taking pictures of stuff at a certain distance. So if you know you're working close in um, and you're not going to be working further than 10, I think 10 metres away, then you can set the limiter to focus between 2.2 and 10 metres. That means then what's not happening is the lens isn't hunting all over the range of the zoom. It's only hunting over a small distance which means it will autofocus quicker. I mean, it's a quick autofocus anyway, um, but that will just speed it up even more. And then also you can do from an inf infinity to 10 meters. So if you know that you're focusing on stuff that's at a certain distance and it's going to be there all the time, it's not going to get closer than 10 meters. You can basically set it to focus from 10 meters to infinity. And again, that will speed up the autofocus. You've then got a button to switch the um, optical stabilization on or off the OSS. Um, generally I have it on um, unless I'm doing stuff like on a tripod or whatever and then I'll switch it off and then you've got a switch underneath that that switches between three modes for the optical stabilization now your first mode mode one is like a general mode that will stabilize the lens horizontally and vertically so um, it'll try and stop the lens um, you know remove that shake if you like up and down and left and right Button two is more for like what I would call a panning mode. So if you're shooting birds that are coming across in front of you all day, you know, you might just want to take out that up and down movement, the vertical movement, not the horizontal. And that's what button two will do. 
Button three is what I'd call for like erratic subjects, so subjects that are moving around erratically. It will try and then um, remove any vibration from that. I generally don't use three, I generally lose one most of the time, and I say if I'm panning I'll use two. But that's a, all down the side of the lens, and that's basically the design. So now we've gone through the design of this lens, the important, or all important bit I suppose, is what do I think of the performance? Well, after using this lens for about 18 months now, I can't say I've had a situation where the lens has disappointed me really. Um, I use the lens a lot at 600 millimeters and I think its performance at 600 is very, very sharp. Um, never had an issue with it at all. You might say as you get down towards 200 mil, um, it's slightly less sharp, but it's nothing that you'd really notice unless you were really looking. For me, it performs fantastically at sort of every um, point along its zoom range from 200 to 600 so I haven't got an issue with it on that front. Some people might see it as a problem that the autofocus can't be overridden by just turning the manual focus ring. Um, I don't find that an issue because I think you've got a very generous sized manual focus ring and it's very very smooth so potentially I think there's a possibility that you could be knocking it when you're in autofocus when you don't want to change the focus so for me it just makes more sense to have it on a button and as I say I use the lens buttons for that. Um, autofocus wise it's virtually silent. Um, I have had some lenses in the past where you can really hear the autofocus motor kicking in and for some subjects you know that can be enough to to cause an issue. Um, so yeah if you want silent autofocus then you're not going to go far wrong with this. So let's get down to the final nitty gritty in this little bit of a conclusion for this lens. There are only three things I would really really like for this lens um, to do that it doesn't do. Number one and most important to me is some sort of zoom lock. I know I've mentioned this before, um, it's not a deal breaker for me because I'm aware of it but you can imagine you've just bought this lens, you're lying somewhere out in the, in the wilderness, you've got the lens on a bean bag, you've got that animal comes in front of you, you're at 600 millimetres, you're resting on the bean bag and you turn the camera, following that animal, shooting all the time, shots of your life, it looks towards you, brilliant. You then look and realise that you zoom has gone all the way back to 200. That can happen. Um, it's happened to me a couple of times before I was aware of it and there are a couple of ways to try and solve that. This is so smooth, which I love, but there's no lock on the zoom. So if you're at 600 mil and you're on a bean bag, it does have a tendency to start moving that zoom in. And when you're concentrating on getting a shot, you can just not notice that and all of a sudden you're losing all that you know, zoom length that you bought the lens for in the first place. Now what I've done to combat that is I cover this in a neoprene cover and what I tend to do if I'm shooting on a bean bag is I'll drop the neoprene down over the zoom ring if I'm shooting at 600 just to provide more friction so that if I'm on a bean bag it's not gonna move that zoom. So that'd be point one for Sony if you're watching. Um, just a, a simple zoom lock at 600 would, would do. I don't want to even want to, to lock it, you know, if you could lock it at all points that would be great, but just to lock it at 600 would, would do the job for me. Number two, minimum focus distance. Now this lens I think is rated at 2.4 metres. So what that means is it will only focus to 2.4 metres. After that you, you won't be able to get focus. So anything closer than that and you, and you can't focus on it. That really for me removes um, some of the macro capabilities of the lens if you like plus sometimes you do get in situations where you know I've been had stuff come towards me closer and closer and closer and eventually I've just lost focus because it's been so close to me um, it does happen on occasion so if this would focus at 1.5 meters it would make me very happy again not a deal breaker it's just one of those things that turns the almost perfect lens for me into the perfect lens Right, so point three, and that is the aperture. Now this, this lens actually um, 
when you get to about 300 mil zoomed out, it will switch from f5.6 to f6.3. You know, looking at some other lenses from other manufacturers within this area, if it went to 400 millimeters at f5.6, that would just make me that slightly little bit happier. It just means that on those days where you're out first thing in the morning and the light's not very good, at 400 mil, you know, then you've got a really, really good wildlife lens at 300 um, f5.6. You're not quite long enough. I always say on my beginner videos, you can shoot at 300 millimeters for a wildlife lens, but if you can get to 400, then you know, you've really got a, a well-performing wildlife lens that you can basically use forever. You know, you're not gonna to need to upgrade if you can get to that 400 mil. But of course, we know that's where the expense kicks in. But there you go. There are the three things that I would improve on this lens. As I say, for me, the problem with that is I see that they would increase the price probably to about three, three and a half grand, um, which again, is a big jump and it takes it out of a lot of people's range. Right, so I hope that's been useful to you. I think I've covered most things on this lens. Um, it's not one where I'm gonna go into taking loads of images and showing you what it looks like in the corners. Um, to be honest, <laughs> I think if you get caught up in that, most lenses today, um, there are very few that are bad lenses. We're all talking at this price, good lenses from good to excellent and you know this borders on the excellent to very good it's right up there so for the price i don't think you can go wrong um, anyway i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope this has been useful to you if anybody's got any observations anything that you think i've missed anything that you want me to look at with this lens please stick them in the comments below i do read all comments and i do reply to all comments and uh, yeah for those of you not subscribed think about subscribing to the channel I'm off um, to do a little bit more exploring in this area, hopefully get some wildlife done with this lens, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye.